In just one year, over $1.3 billion was stolen at the hands of a simple and sophisticated cyber scam. If not for perfectly timed FBI operations, millions, potentially billions more, would have been swept away into the dark web, never to be seen again. Since the early 2010s, cyber hacking and technology-based crime has taken a dramatic turn. Stealing information, identity, and money is now easier than ever before. But just as the justice system reached breaking point, just as the cyber criminals thought they'd got the upper hand, the FBI and the DOJ stepped in, flexed their muscles, and proved once again that you don't mess with the American government. Since then, two colossal anti-hacking operations have torn apart cybercrime gangs, and over a hundred people have ended up behind bars as a result. Let's take a look at the fascinating unfolding of Operation Wirewire, and its even more disruptive follower, Operation Rewire. In 2019, the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center received exactly 467,361 complaints. That's an average of 1,280 cyber complaints every single day. Thousands of American individuals and businesses fell victim, and we lost more than $3.5 billion as a result. Remember, that was only last year. In 2020, as tens of millions of people have been forced to work from home, the scope of potential targets has increased dramatically. As it stands, we're on track to achieve the highest single monetary loss as a result of cybercrime in the nation's history. While the FBI, counterterrorism units, CIA, and local and state police forces are doing everything in their power to thwart the skilled hackers, the reality is that stamping out cybercrime is near impossible. As one door closes, another opens. As soon as the FBI squashes one scam, another one, or two, or ten, are already underway. The more that technology intertwines itself in our everyday lives, the more vulnerable we become to online criminals. If you download the wrong attachment from an email pretending to be your bank, then you may have just installed a devious malware and given the hacker complete access to your hard drive. And the worst part is, we often don't even realize it till it's too late. Or you could fall victim to a relatively straightforward phone phishing scam, one in which the thief impersonates a colleague, friend, or local cop to glean key information from you. Did you fall for it? Did you just give out the name of your first pet and your mother's maiden name? Then watch your bank balance disappear. While phone phishing requires a level of composure under pressure, and network hacking requires expert coding ability, there's another type of online scam, one which has been growing in popularity over the last decade, which is easy to carry out and even easier to be fooled by. It's called BEC, and it stands for Business Email Compromise. In 2017 alone, BEC scams caused a dramatic, painful loss of $675 million to organizations across the country. According to AFP, the Association for Financial Professionals, alarmingly, 77% of American organizations were targeted by BEC scams. So had the majority of organizations not been on guard, that figure could have rocketed up into the billions. The upward trend is obvious. The year prior, that stolen figure was barely half, at a loss of $360 million. But what exactly is BEC scamming? We know that it stands for Business Email Compromise, but how does it actually work? Unlike some cyber attacks, the success of BEC rests heavily on one aspect, the target. For a BEC scam to succeed, the target needs to be able to perform wire transfer payments, either for themselves or their employer. Under the typical victim umbrella, you'll find accountants, CEOs, HR managers, bank tellers, family stockbrokers, or the number-savvy parent who handles all the kids' expenses. Now think of your typical black hat hacker. Let's call him Max. Max takes eye at your accountants and money handlers and thinks to himself, how can I convince them to transfer their next payment to me? How can I reroute their money to my own account? How can I get them to write me a check? One word impersonation. Also known as social engineering, Max can put on a fake persona, create a fake email address, and try his hand at pretending to be a key employee, high-level executive, or business partner. While 9 out of 10 targets will have the common sense to ward off Max, 1 in 10 might be tired or distracted and fall for the trap. Based on AFP data, 54% of all successful BEC scams resulted in wire transfers, while 34% ended with victims signing over written checks to their attackers. While a BEC scam usually seeks wire transfers and checks, they can also hunt employee tax records or personally identifiable information, such as social insurance numbers, 
passports, driver's licenses, or employment history, all of which can be further exploited down the line, even sold on the dark web. For these reasons, BEC is also sometimes called cyber-enabled financial fraud because the initial email opens a treasure trove of fraudulent possibilities if the victim falls for it. Unfortunately, these types of attacks aren't slowing down. In fact, they're multiplying at a rapid rate and causing the FBI a world of trouble. From 2015 until 2017, BEC scams were up a staggering 2,370% meaning that from 2013 until 2017, $5.3 billion was stolen. Billion with a B. A successful BEC is dangerous not only because of its deception, but also because it can easily intertwine itself with other forms of fraud. Five of the most prominent intersecting methods revolve around romance, employment opportunities, car sales, lotteries, and property rental. Let's take a look at them. Romance scams convince victims into thinking they are in a legitimate relationship, typically with someone who they've met online. Once you trust their partner, you're tricked into sending or laundering money under the guise of some half-baked cover story. Employment opportunity scams make victims think they've landed a work-from-home job. Either this can be a simple ploy to gain personal information, or it can lead to financial gain as well. After you go through the fake hiring process, you're told that you've been sent your first paycheck. However, you've accidentally been overpaid. The fake company asks you to wire transfer the balance of the overpayment, and then, of course, your paycheck never clears anyway. This works in reverse for a rental scam, where the scammer agrees to rent a property, sends a bad check with an accidental overpayment to their landlord, and then requests the balance be sent back via wire transfer before the check bounces. Then there's the car sales scam where you're convinced that you're buying a non-existent vehicle and must pay for it by sending a wire transfer in advance, or sometimes the codes of prepaid gift cards. Perhaps the most sinister of them all, however, is the lottery scam, in which you're convinced you've won an international lottery. The catch, of course, is that you're asked to pay fees and taxes before receiving the multi-million dollar payout, which never, ever, ever comes. Clearly, the scope of the BEC scam is large and fraught with danger, especially when emotion is brought into play with romance and lottery factors. After the theft had hit an all-time high in 2017, following continued growth, the FBI needed to step in. So when the BEC scams were running rampant, the FBI announced that it was going to put a stop to it all. Too many personal details and too much money was being conned. The FBI could no longer sit and watch merely tackling small-scale cases as they popped up. So in June of 2018, they launched a large-scale investigative takedown known as Operation Wirewire. Once the operation got off the ground, it had the full support of the FBI's main players, as well as a number of other local and federal and even international agencies. The Bureau's director, Christopher Wray, highlighted his office's determination to bring the criminal masterminds down. The FBI is working every day to disrupt and dismantle the criminal enterprises that target our businesses and our citizens. With the operation in full swing, leading agents began noticing patterns in terms of both the victims and the perpetrators. Let's take a look at the victims first. Surprisingly, one particular business sector saw an extraordinary number of targeted scams. Real estate. Attacks hitting the sector in 2017 resulted in $56 million loss an enormous jump from the $47,000 the year prior. In one real estate attack, it was found that a pair of Nigerian nationals residing in Texas had sent a real estate closing attorney an email asking for $246,000 be wired to their account. Convinced that it was common practice, he'd sent over the money before hastily realizing he'd been conned. By the time the bank was notified of the fraud, the attorney had already lost $130,000, with the other $116,000 immediately frozen. In a second attack, a Fort Lauderdale resident used BEC to gain access to the email accounts of a Massachusetts real estate attorney. With that email address book in hand, he attempted to trick the customers into transferring $500,000 to an account for a real estate transaction. With events like these sprouting up left, right, and center, the arrests needed to be made and quick. And that's exactly what the FBI did. In conjunction with law enforcement agents across the country, the FBI executed over 51 domestic actions. That means search warrants, warning letters, and asset seizure warrants. 
a number of district attorney's offices charged 15 alleged money mules for their role in defrauding victims. Money mules typically keep a fraction of the cash for their trouble and then wire the money as directed by the fraudster. But they're not the brains of the operation. That title falls into fraudsters like Olalik and Jacob Ponley who copped much heavier scrutiny and punishment. Ponley instructed his mules to convert the fraud proceeds to Bitcoin, then send them to his own virtual wallet. In the US, this type of crime falls under wire fraud, which is a federal offense that carries a maximum sentence of 20 years imprisonment. For individual fraudsters, that can come with a fine of up to $250,000. For larger criminal syndicates, that number grows to half a million. So if you were thinking of sending out a few fake emails to boost your bank balance, unless you want to end up behind bars, we'd recommend you think twice. In total, WireWire resulted in the seizure of $2.4 million, the disruption and recovery of approximately $14 million in fraudulent wire transfers, and a total of 74 arrests worldwide. 42 of those arrests were made in the United States, while 29 were in Nigeria. The remaining three were spread across Canada, Mauritius, and Poland. While Jacob Ponley's arrest and punishment is one of the more dramatic, resulting in expulsion from the UAE and extradition from Nigeria, he's far from the only one to be extradited. Adeyemi Odafuye and his partner in crime, Stanley Hugo Chukwu Nwok, who each went by a number of aliases, were both charged on seven counts of fraud for their BEC scheme which attempted to swindle approximately $2.6 million. One of their victims personally lost $440,000. Remember the real estate scam that tried to con an attorney? Thanks to some persistent FBI agents, we now know who is responsible. Two Nigerian nationals living in Dallas, Gloria Okali and Paul A. Sosa. With an indictment filed on June 6, 2018, they were charged with laundering approximately $665,000 in illicit funds in total. Following the enormous success of Operation Wire Wire, the FBI took it to another level, launching an even larger anti-wire fraud operation. This one was called Operation Rewired, and it was big. Starting in May 2019, Rewired aimed to take down hundreds of BEC scammers. More warning letters were sent, more assets were seized, more arrests were made, and nearly $3.7 million in stolen funds were repatriated to their original owners. Acting ICE Director Matthew Albans lay the law down for all to see. Operation Rewired sends a clear message to criminals that no matter how or where crimes are committed, we will do everything within our means to dismantle criminal enterprises that seek to manipulate U.S. institutions and taxpayers. And that they did. Rewired discovered that its conspirators stole over 250,000 identities and filed more than 10,000 fake tax returns. Had these returns been successful, they would have received in excess of $91 million in refunds. Rewired's list of arrests far surpasses its predecessor, with 281 nationals and internationals eventually put in cuffs. Among them were a pair of Chicago residents, Brittany Stokes, a 27-year-old, and Kenneth Nina Lowo, a 40-year-old. They were charged with laundering over $1.5 million from proceeds of BEC scams, although that number could have been much higher had the banks not stepped in to freeze another $3.6 million in transit. Two Texas men, Opiemi Adioso and Benjamin Efebajo, allegedly assumed 12 fake identities and defrauded a total of 37 victims across the United States, which resulted in at least $3.4 million laundered. And then there were the two Miami thieves, Yamo Guevara Tameo and Yumedi Govantes. While they did launder almost $950,000 of proceeds of BEC scams, where these two fraudsters really thrived was in the recruitment department. They were responsible for onboarding approximately 18 other individuals who served as their money mules. Thanks to these and hundreds of other successful charges, the U.S. is now equipped with its very own BEC Counter Action Group. Not only does it take down criminals in the act, but it also educates the public on how to protect themselves from online crime. And just because the operations have already brought down hundreds of domestic and international scammers, that doesn't mean that the FBI is slowing down anytime soon. FBI Director Christopher Wray made that crystal clear. We'll keep coming after you, no matter where you are. And to the public, we'll keep doing whatever we can to protect you.